Good morning, everybody. It's Zach. Thanks for joining me today. This is my record store day hangover video. Uh, that's probably what I will title it as. Um, I did participate in record store day. I my, my the store that I my local store Music Connection opened at 7 a.m. I got in line about 6:40, and uh, they opened at 7. Was in line for about 40 minutes. Wasn't too bad. Once I got in, I got they had a lot of titles that I you know, was wanting and looking for. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I got. And I only got four titles, but then I'll jump into some recent finds and whatnot. So, let me go ahead and get started. Uh, once I walked in, one of the first titles I noticed was this uh, Cross-Eyed Strangers, Wilco. Uh, I, you know, I didn't even know this was being released. I didn't dissect the, the list very well. I usually take notes or put them in my notes on my phone or whatever. And I didn't do that this year. I was pretty lazy about scouring the record store day releases. Um, but I kind of had an idea of what I wanted anyway. So, um, I didn't really, I think I did, I did that probably subconsciously so I wouldn't spend too much money, but, uh, there were a lot of really good releases. Um, a lot of interesting releases this year. Um, I know a lot of people weren't into it, but I, I felt like it was a pretty strong, uh, record store day. But anyway, I saw this sitting there and I was like, what is this? And anyway, it's a, it's an alternate, it's just alternate takes of the Yankee Hotel Foxtrot record, uh, which is one of my favorite Wilco records. And um, I was happy to pick it up. I, you know, it's, it's got some Jeff Tweedy solo versions of the songs. It's got a lot of live cuts and, um, and some alternate takes. So very cool, very cool record to accompany the, um, original cut of the record so very happy with that uh, in addition to that I picked up and I'm not a huge Pearl Jam fan I mean I, I'm I am in passing you know I mean I, I appreciate I can appreciate them um, but I'm not like you know an insane follower of Pearl Jam or anything um, and I don't even know this record yield very well but I noticed the track listing when I was looking at it online and I thought oh it's a pretty good set list I don't know all the songs but I did know a few and I felt like, you know, this might be worth picking up and, um, and it, and it was, I, I listened to it. I think it's a great sounding live set, um, and, and kind of their prime, if you will. And, uh, like, I, you know, like I said, I have like the first three or four records of Pearl Jam and that's about kind of where I stop with them. But, um, this is a great record. I think it was originally a, like a sampler that came out when Yield was released. And this is just a live, uh, live show from I think Australia if I remember correctly but it sounds good I had to clean up the records they were in paper sleeves um, but uh, once they were cleaned up it, it put it on the turntable sounded great so um, good stuff Pearl Jam giveaway uh, this was high on my list um, the Chet Baker Chet Craft Mono uh, pressing of this this record I have the stereo last year I went to the same record store for record store day and I picked up Art Pepper meets the rhythm section in mono and that record sounds so good to me in mono some when when mono's done right it really really kind of hits different it kind of attacks you at a different on a whole different level and this is no different. I feel like this this mono version of this record is stands out. Uh, the the stereo version sounds fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just listening to it in mono for me was 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 a more just a, a better experience. Uh, I really really feel like this is going to be my go to. Um, I know they released the Art Pepper and stereo. I won't even pick it up. I don't I don't need it. I mean I've, that that mono cut to me is just is perfect. Um, so anyway, I feel kind of the same way about this. I really, really enjoyed listening to this in mono. The stereo is no slouch. So, you know, by all means, but, uh, very glad to pick this up and it sounds insanely good. And I'm a big Chet Baker fan. They, they also had the, uh, the Chet Baker, uh, those studio sessions or whatever, I can't remember the, the name of the release, but I think that's a record state. Uh, that's a record store day first, so I'm gonna wait. And that was a pretty pricey set, so I'm gonna wait and hopefully get a better deal on that when it comes out. If it's gonna be, hopefully it will be coming out 
uh, later on, but that's what I hear and what I read. So I passed on that, but a uh, big Chet Baker fan, very glad with that mono version of Chet. So um, I'm going to, that. oh, I had one more, sorry. Um, and it's the Surf in the Great Lakes. This is a really fun surf rock record uh, compilation done by uh, Sundays. And it's the K-Bank Studio Surfsides of the 1960s, featuring the Trashmen, the Marauders, the Mustangs, the Boss Tweeds, the Valiants, the Vaqueros. What a great name for a band, the Vaqueros. The Chancellors, the Pagans, the Shandells, the Ready Men, and more. And this is great. Cut by Kevin Gray. Sounds great on this aqua blue vinyl. And uh, very happy with this, a very fun record. I love surf rock and that kind of garagey surf rock stuff. So that's a fun a fun record to have and uh, glad I picked that up. There were some things I wanted. Uh, I, I wanted that Scott Weiland 12 Bar Blues record and I'm, I don't even really know why because I don't think it's like the best record in the world, but it's interest, It's an interesting sounding record to me. And it was done by Daniel, it was produced by Daniel Lenoir, who I, I love and um, I kind of like the stuff that he does for the most part. But um, yeah, they didn't have that, unfortunately, but I, that was high on my list. Um, and I had the Miles Davis in my hand, you know, I, I had to make some compromises, but uh, overall I'm glad, I felt like I had a pretty a pretty good good day, at, uh, you know, picked up some good titles. So anyway, um, this is just recent fine stuff I'm gonna go on and go ahead and show you. This is uh, Everything But The Girls, uh, uh, latest record that just came out like last week. Uh, it's called Fuse, and it's Tracy Thorne and Ben Watt. They're like a like a duo from Britain that did a lot of really cool, um, you know, club club scene electro type, you know, music back in the '80s and and in the '90s. And uh, I don't think they made a record in many many years. So uh, I was reading about this upcoming release, and I thought, oh, this would be a cool thing to pick up and. I think I listened to the single, and, and it's really good. Just great melodies. Tracy Thorne's voice, she just has that killer, killer voice. And, you know, very cool electro beats, very cool melodies, just a, a wonderful record. And uh, this was mastered at Abbey Road by Sean McGee and pressed at Optimal, so it sounds great. It's very quiet and uh, just a very cool sounding record. I've only listened to it once, but I highly recommend it if you're into this. Check them out. Uh, everything but the girl. Just you know, they had that one hit in the '90s, and there, there's a lot more to this band, to this duo than than that one hit. But anyway, moving on. Uh, Boots, Nancy Sinatra. This is a this was a Amazon release version of this a variant of this record, and I bought it on the where, warehouse deals Amazon, so I got it for cheap, and it's on yellow wax. Pressed at RTI, uh, cut from the tape. I really like this Lee Hazelwood period of Nancy Sinatra, as do many, but um, so I've been picking these up a little bit here and there, and I have some of the Lee Hazelwood Light, uh, Light in the Attic releases too, which are really, really good. Um, so I, I just love this stuff, and this is kind of a no-brainer for me. Uh, great, great songs. Um, great cover songs, just she does a couple of really good Stones covers on there and uh, just good stuff. So, um, Ryan Adams, Romeo and Juliet, he released like four or five records on his website. This was one I this is the one I really kind of thought was pretty good. Um, so I went ahead and bought this one. Um, didn't like the other ones enough to really want to get it on vinyl, so but it's on that purple wax. Uh, it's a decent record. Um, I don't feel like any of this stuff is like mind-blowingly good but you know this one this one I, it stood out to me so I picked it up uh, this was cut by Ian Sefshik that's at Dark Sky Mastering um, so if you're into it check it out uh, Hole Celebrity Skin I really like this record and you know I never had this record on CD when it came out but I saw this uh, music on vinyl release and I went ahead and picked it up. I, 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 I'm nostalgic for 90s stuff. So this is a record I liked. Um, it's, it's definitely different than their earlier work, a little more polished, but I, I think the songs are good. And um, yeah, so whole oh, celebrity skin. 
Yes, Fragile, this is the clear vinyl version from the Rhino Start Your Ear Off campaign that they do every year. And uh, it sounds great. I did not have this record. Um, I know this is like a very popular classic rock release, proggy, yes, release, but um, I picked this up. I had a coupon for Barnes & Noble and uh, yeah, sounds really good. Very cool record. Blue Mountain Dog Days. This is a, a band from the late 80s, 90s, uh, roots rock band, fronted by Carrie Hudson, um, this guy here, and it's a three-piece, Lori Sturrett, who is the sister of John Sturrett from Wilco, and I saw this band when I lived in Austin 20 plus years ago, a couple of times, and just a great, great live act. Um, I believe they were from Mississippi originally, and uh, this Deep Track Zach has a channel, it's a really good channel, and he also has a really good Instagram channel, and uh, he posted a, he posted this, and I was like, I wonder if this is ever released on vinyl, and it was, and I picked up this reissue cheap on Amazon, and like I said, just really good Roots Rock stuff. Uh, this was kind of lumped in with the alternative country scene back in the 90s, so um, I had it on CD, and I'm glad to have a, a vinyl copy, and it sounds really good, so. That was a cool find. All right. These are some classic rock German pressings that I picked up at Half Price Books. They were all $8 and really clean. Some of these I had and some of these I didn't have, but um, I'll pro I bought these because I might end up selling them later on or auctioning, auctioning them off at some point or doing something, but, um, I just kind of couldn't leave them sitting there for eight bucks a piece. I felt like, you know, so this is the Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young Deja Vu, uh, German on Atlantic. And this is the only one I need to clean up and listen to. I listen to, but they all, all the ones I listened to thus far sound good. This is a Creedence Clearwater revival, uh, comp called Gold. And it's got a lot of their hits on it. And I really liked the, what stood out to me was this really cool fantasy label. Fantasy and uh, Bella, Bellafon label. So German Press. And all these, the ones I've listened to, I've listened to all of them, but one are super quiet, sound good. Almond Brothers, Brothers and Sisters on the Capricorn label. Very clean. I didn't have this record. I had a copy of it, a, a kind of a beater U.S. copy, and I got rid of it. So I might, I might hang on to that. And I didn't have a copy of this. I had another copy. I had an, an, a U.S. copy, and I kind of a later one, and I got rid of it. But this is on the Atlantic label. German. Sounds pretty good. So, anyway, Simon and Garfunkel, Parsley, Sage, Rose, Mary, and Time. I didn't even have this record. Uh, this sounds really good. Um, so anyway, some interesting imports. I love German. I mean, I love finding imports if they're on the cheap, you know. Uh, okay, moving on to some jazz. Uh, we just lost a Maja Jamal. Uh, I picked this up about a month ago. And this is a Count em, Count em 88. So it's the Maja Jamal Trio on the Argo label. I got this for like $6 at... Uh, I think it was Half Price Books. It's got that really cool Argo chess label. Uh, the Awakening. This is a recent reissue of The Awakening, which is a, uh, I think this is a killer record. I'd never listened to this before getting this reissue. I really like it. It's a very, very cool record. And uh, this was, this is the Third Man Verve series that's being pressed at Third Man, which I think, I think they're, I've been happy with the releases I've picked up so far. Uh, Andrew Hill, Dance with Death. This is a killer, killer record. Uh, Tone Poet. I mean, just, I just think Andrew Hill's killer. I really love his stuff. And Point of, what is this? Point of Departure. This is a Blue Note classic. Another killer. Andrew Hill. This was one, these are some I picked up at the record store. Mess of Blues. Wild Bill, De Wild Bill Davis, Johnny Hodges. Um... I think Kenny Burrell's on this too. Yeah, Kenny Burrell, Joe Wilder. Um, kind of a, you know, a cool bluesy jazz record. 
I love the cover too. Great art. Uh, this is a cool West Montgomery moving along OJC still in shrink. Originally five ninety eight. I think I picked that up for about fifteen. Uh, oh, I already showed that one. Oh. And lastly, we're going to go with Jimmy Reed. I'm Jimmy Reed on DJ. A very, very clean copy of this record. Uh, Jimmy Reed, what, Chicago blues, early, early blues. A lot of people very influenced by Jimmy Reed's early work. Really nice, really, really nice VJ. Clean VJ. Usually these are beat to shit. So I have to thank my friends at Crazy Rhythms for this one. Um, great. Great release. Great record. All right, and that's it. Thanks for joining me today. And uh, it's been raining all morning, so I'm going to go let my dog out. And I think it's starting to, starting to clear up a little bit. So anyway, take care, everybody. Have a great weekend. And uh, yeah, see you soon.